Hello everyone, Nick from Hobury Gaming here, featuring the Splug Surprise and Gobs deck from Clash on Clashington. Now, as you can see here, this is the, let me focus this real quick, this is the Splug Surprise and Gobs intro deck packaging. It comes with every single purchase, it just is the deck box. On the front you can see Splug right here, with two other Gobs featured in the deck. And also on the back we have ourselves, there we go, basically the name of the deck, a little description, and basically staying all the cards featured in this deck box. Also featured with this is the instructions on how to play the game of Clash. As you can see here, we have ourselves... Let me zoom this out a bit. We have ourselves the first page, which features all the rules and instructions on how to play the game on both sides. It's a little detailed, but basically it supplies you with every single tidbit of knowledge you need to know when playing the game. And in order to assist those who are fairly new to the game. There's also this right here, which is basically a visual aid as a second page, showing you how basically the sides of the field work, the layout of the field, um, the layout of minion cards, stuff like that, different types of minion cards, and everything here as well for events and circumstances, surprises, and other things like that, clashing, and basically a little piece right here for links on Homebrewery Gaming. Now, delving into the Splug Surprise and Gobs deck, which I'll open up real quick. And we shall start seeing what is inside this little box. As you can see here, we have some Clash cards. They are really nice quality, a little lighter than your typical uh, card stock. Oh, look, I have Splug. But um, basically, it is very nice quality. As you can see right here, I'm like pushing around a little. I'm exerting quite a bit of force on these. These are very durable. They are nice. They feel like professional grade quality and they are great to play with as opposed to just some pieces of paper, which I know some of you out there are doing and that's completely fine because I get where you're coming from. But if you would like some nicer quality, there are these cards now featured on the Game Crafter. So starting things off is, whoa, <laughs> where the heck did this blood go? Anyways, <laughs> a little more surprise than I'd expect. Uh, so starting things off for the deck, we have Rush's Sugar, which is a zero action cost item event that gives you the effect of gaining an extra action in the Clash of you play it that turn. You cannot use that action to draw a card. Um, as I mentioned before, this card is amazing. It is versatile, it gives you the tempo you need, it gives you actions you need, and it's just an all around great card to have because who doesn't want actions? Coming off on second is where we start to diverse a little from the farmer's deck, uh, we have Gunk Free Goop here, a level 2, 20 buffiness, ooze minion, and his effect is, let me see if I can focus that, there we go. When you play this Gunk Free Group, remove all effects and gain buffiness from a conscious mean in this Clashington. This card is basically a nullifier. It has pretty weak buff, but as you will see by most cards in the Gob decks, they'll have weak buffs in basically response to having pretty good effects. So for something like this, although it really doesn't do a great job of negating cards effects as to like when you play this card, it has great effects on things where they have continuous effects. So aside from going for group, there he is, we have Splug. Splug is a level 1 VIP gob minion, 10 buffiness, and VIP basically means you can only have one of this particular card on the field at any time. Now Splug's effect basically is a supporter of surprises, which is another type of card featured in this deck, and you'll see them very soon. Uh, his effect is essentially where if you trigger a surprise event in this Clash of Tin the last turn, you gain extra action in this Clash of Tin this turn. So what's great about Splug is you can play him a turn after you've already triggered a surprise event, and his effect still counts. You can still gain actions from this, as opposed to where he had to be on the field, he could just come out instantly from like some crazy effect or whatnot, and his effect will still take an effect, and extra actions are always amazing. Okay, so the next card we have Aspiring Ooze, a level 3 with only 10 buffiness, but that is because its effect is when you play the Aspiring Ooze, you have it become a copy of any minion in the Clashington, but it remains level 3. Now notice how it says a copy of any minion in the Clashington. That means it could be on your side, your opponent's side, but it can also be unconscious. You can search through some unconscious cards on the field, and you can basically make the same copy of it. The only bigger drawback is that it has to be level 3 still, so it will fill up your level 3 slot, and basically you won't have multiple aspiring oozes in a single Clashington. But still, an amazing effect. 
Coming off next, we have Spit Cedar, a level 2 with only 15 buff. It is a plant minion, but its effect is whenever you play an event card, you may place bud minion tokens with level 1 type plant and buffing as 10 on your side of any active Clashington. This card is great if you're able to pull off a lot of zero action event costs and fill up the and, bleh, and fill up the board really quick. As you can see with this signature down here, this was uh, the original sketch was sketched up by my friend James and I incorporated it into the card. So a little shout out to James there. He's a pretty good artist and um, basically I enjoy this card. He enjoys the card. He's pulled off some pretty awesome things with it. But um, basically with that 15 buff, you do need to compensate in a way by playing out those actions so you can have the board filled out better. Silly Whiff Sand. This is a very conniving card. A one action cost item event. Its effect is an enemy minion of your choice in the Clash of 10 becomes unconscious until the beginning of your next turn. This card can be very nasty, um, but it will only work really well if a Clash is about to be called, like if it already was called, or if you have some other grand scheme in mind. Aside from that, this card won't do too much, but if you have basically one turn of response for a Clash, you can use this as just a free unconscious effect. Um, but yeah, moving on. Pesky Gob. Similar to the Potato Master from the Farmer's deck, but it is level 1. It's basically your vanilla kind of minion, just your very basic 20 buffiness, which is amazing for a level 1, but it doesn't have any effects. Its flavor text says, a gob with the annoying nature of 10, what's not to love? And to be honest, with 20 buff for level 1, you can't really love that anymore. So here we go. Um, coming off to one of the first circumstances in this deck, it is room for one more. Now this card is very crafty. It's unlike any of the circumstances in the Farmer's deck because while this room for one more is active, your minion slots in this Clash Tin change. They become two level one or below slots and two level two or below slots, as opposed to the level one or below, level two or below, and level three or below. This essentially makes it where you can play as more of the little guys but in response, you have to fill up more spots in order to call the Clash. Still, with the zero action cost for a circumstance, it's very worth a try to play. And if you know how to get the cards out quick, then it's definitely an amazing card to play. Okay, penalty. Zero action cost and one of the first surprise events that are featured in this deck. Basically, the way how surprise events are used is when you play them, you place them sideways and face down. You place them sideways just to show that they're not inactive as events, but... um. When you play it sideways, it shows that, hey, this is a surprise event, and it's zero actions as incorporated on the card. But um, it also states that if the card's requirements, this surprise events for penalties, are met, which is stay in the effect below, you have to trigger it immediately. Now, although surprise events may seem amazing, like they cause zero actions and they could easily give you tempo in a game, they do fill up your event slot for the meantime. So if you want to play a new event, you would have to slap this one out and make it inactive. Also, you cannot choose when the effect triggers, it triggers immediately when it would be triggered. So for example, for penalty, it says if an opponent's effect, oh, here we go, if an opponent's effect, including buffy damage, in this clash ten would make one and only one of your means unconscious, you can negate that. So for zero actions, you could pretty much negate an instance of making one of your own means unconscious, but at the same time, if your friend can figure out, or your opponent friend or opponent, I hope they're your friend, um, can basically figure out what the surprise event is, they could easily play around that. So just keep a look out the surprise events. Okay, so for the next one we have Papers Please, just a one action cost, basic event, it was featured in the Farmer's deck, and because obviously it's an all around card, for one action, you get to draw two cards. Simple as that, more tempo, people love it, and it's a great card to play all around. Blitz Beetle, this was another card that was featured in the Farmer's deck, but worked a lot better in the Gob deck. Level one, 10 buffiness. It is a bug minion, and its effect is playing the blitz beetle does not cost an action. Still, only one blitz beetle can be played per turn. So this guy can come out really quick. Works really well for with room for one more, just because you can fill the slots easier. And although it's very little buffiness, it's that bigger edge towards calling the clash beforehand. For Boater, this is basically um, the alternate card from the Farmer's deck, which is Almanac's Farmer. It is a level 1 minion, and has 15 buffiness. It is a Carney minion. Its effect is when you play this Forboder, search your deck for a basic event card, reveal it, then put it into your hand. Shuffle your deck afterwards. Now, there's a lot of cards in this deck that are basic events, and as such, Forboder is a great incorporation with that. So, this is a card to keep out, to keep handy, and to work with as you play. Another Blitzbeal. There are a few copies of it in here. Another Ooze. Now, here we go. Warkazoo. 
surprise item event for zero actions is another, as I said, a surprise event. So its effect is you place it down sideways, face down when you play it, and it triggers immediately when it's activated. Or, or it is activated immediately when you trigger it. So its effect is if your opponent calls a clash in this Clashington, you gain an extra action in that Clashington during your next turn. Basically a form of Rush of Sugar, and could also work really well with Splug. This is in our way to gain actions, and one of the very few cards that do gain actions in the first set of Clash. So it's a handy card to have, and it can be incorporated in most decks. There are some that work better without, but um, just in general, I've seen people use this and they have a pretty good time with it. Tiptozer, level 2, one of the first gob means aside from Splug and the Pesky Gob, is a 20 buff, and its effect is very straightforward. It is unaffected by your opponent's basic events and basic circumstances. So as mentioned by the name, it's a very sneaky kind of card. It has low buffiness for its level, but in response it can basically negate most effects from events and circumstances that your opponent has. But uh, keep in mind that it's only basic, so if they have some like items or stuff like that, or even surprises, they can still be affected. Still, all around, um, for the low buff finish you might need to buff it up a bit, but it's very reliable on the field. Okay, the Gobplex. This is one of the few ways the gobs can basically counteract against bigger minions. The way how the Gobplex works is it is a one action cost card at basic event, and when you play it, you send a conscious gob you control in the Clashington to your torn up pile. Then you deal buffy damage equal to double the chosen gob's buffiness to an enemy minion in this Clashington. At the end of your turn, you put that gob back into your hand. So although you're not really losing card advantage, um, most of the time the Gobplex goes 1-1, one one, basically dealing enough buffy damage to the opponent, it's a great way for gobs, being the little things they are, to deal a lot of damage to bigger minions. So this is basically a way how the deck compensates for itself, but it works from there. Gunk for Goop, we've already seen. Another Gunk for Goop, there's three in this deck. Another Gobplex, as you can see. Bolt Hunter. This is another great way how the gobs basically counteract against bigger, higher level minions. It is a level 2 gob minion with 20 buff, and its effect is when you play the Bolt Hunter, you may move a conscious level 3 minion your opponent controls in this Clashington to an appropriate empty minion slot in another active Clashington on their side. This is a great way, especially if someone has called the Clash, to move the bigger guys to somewhere else. Now, of course, it doesn't completely remove... It doesn't completely remove the, um... The minion from the field as in like making it unconscious it is a great way to basically delay power in a particular area like you get more control in that sense because you're moving your opponent's stuff you're controlling it essentially which is why the guys can be slightly manipulative but overall they know how to counteract bigger things by using them small cells okay the bluffing this is actually very uh very funny very joke like card zero action cost and it is a surprise event so it's placed face down but the way how it works is, while this the bluffing will be made, or when this the bluffing will be made and active, you reveal it, then return it to your hand. So when you play this card, or when it's activated, it's basically just a ha ha laugh in the opponent's face kind of card. And what's great about it is, since it returns to your hand, it makes it more difficult for your opponent to read your hand. This card is, as you can see, a bluff. Um, your opponent might try to figure out like, ooh, he has a surprise event. It's probably going to be like, they'll basically change their plays based on the fact that you have a surprise event down. And also, if you were to slap this out, it still goes back to your hand. So you can basically have a lot of control over this surprise event as opposed to others, because you can play a new event, return this to your hand, basically showing that like, ha, that was a joke the whole time, and you can play it again later down the line. It's a great card to work in coordination with other surprises because it keeps things a lot more secretive. And that's one of the reasons why I actually play myself. A few people are like, what the heck are you doing? This card doesn't seem to be that effective, but you'll be surprised. Because surprise events, <laughs> surprise, surprise events, I just noticed that. Anywho, um, it basically keeps things, like I said, more secretive and harder for your opponent to read what you're playing. Sit with Sand, we've already seen that. Bolt Taunter, amazing ideas. Backpult, this is one of the near the last, I believe, surprise events in this deck. It is a zero action cost, as all surprises are, and is also an item event. And what happens when you play it? or at least when it activates, is when your opponent places a minion in the Clashington, you return it to their hand. Now, stating that it's when your opponent places a minion in the Clashington, that means that if you have, um, if they play a minion, then it triggers, because playing is placing something into a Clashington. But if something is moved into that Clashington, it works as well. If they place a new token, if they place something like that, 
it's returns to the hand. Now tokens are destroyed, at least just go away if there would be returns to the hand. So in a way it could counteract tokens, but at the same time, if they are playing something big, it'll basically return to their hand in general. Okay, the War Kazoo, we've already seen this. Tip Tozer, Rush of Sugar, room for one more. I'm not sure how many more cards, so here we go, Pow. Pow is basically the weaker version of Bam from the Farmer's Deck. It is a zero action cost basic event, and its effect is you deal 10 buffy damage to a minion in the Clashing Tin. Now, Bam naturally does 15 buffy damage, but it does cost an action. So this is one of the many zero action event cards that can help you, uh, you can play a lot of these out in a single turn for the the, uh, the gobs because they can move much faster pace. So for 10 buffy damage, you can make a few level one minions unconscious, but this card is great in coordination with like the gobplex, stuff like that, just because it's just additional damage and it's completely free. Well, I mean, at the cost of a card, but at least it's not at the cost of an action as well. Papers, please, we've already seen. Thrillment, this guy is actually really fun uh, for both you and your opponent, actually. So you have to be careful when playing this guy. He has a level one element minion, uh, 15 buff. His effect is when you play him, each player may search their deck for a zero action cost event card and reveal it. If they do, they then shuffle their deck and play the card in this Clash of Tin immediately. Now state that says zero action cost event. Surprise events do count as that. So you can search your deck for surprise events and play them in the Clashington. Now you have to keep a lookout because obviously your opponent can play some things as well, but for most of the time, it's more tempo to yourself. So this guy, he'll be very fun. He can basically twist things around really quick if your opponent has something in mind. But like I said, moreover, since you have control of when you can play this guy, it's more so advantage in your favor. The buffening, this is featured in this deck as well, but I believe there's only one copy. Um, while this debuffing is active, minions you control in this clash can gain 5 buffiness. It is a zero action basic circumstance. So it's basically one of the ways how um, the gobs and other weaker minions in this deck can compensate for their weak buff. So if you have a circumstance like this on the field as opposed to room for one more, you have more of like average minions than weak minions most of the time. So this is a great way to basically balance the deck for circumstances and that is why it is in here. Spit Cedar, we've already seen. Scrambush. Scrambush is another one of the damage dealing kind of cards that the level ones have to offer, but it is not only limited to gobs. It is a one action cost basic event card, and its effect is that you deal buffy damage to an enemy minion in this clash tin equal to the buffiness of all conscious level one minions you control in that clashing tin. Although you cannot call clash in clash tin that turn, this could easily add up very quick. If you played a lot of level one minions in a clashing tin, this will do a lot of buffy damage, and if it's incorporated with like pals and stuff like that, that's just more damage to deal to bigger minions. So as mentioned before, this is just no way for level ones and weaker minions to basically counteract against the bigger baddies. Tiptozer, we've already seen. Pal, I believe Scrambush was one of the last cards for Boater. Uh, Big Brawler, oh, here we go. Big Brawler is a level one gnome unit with 15 buff, and his effect is that this Big Brawler gains five buffiness for each conscious level two or higher minion your opponent controls in its Clashington. Another counteracting kind of card, but in itself is a minion. So this guy can go to all the way up to 25 buff, and as such, he can become stronger than most pesky gobs, only if your opponent is playing bigger minions. So if you work with that, most of the time, he's actually a pretty strong card. But even from there, um, level one for 15 buff, he's still kind of all right. As you can see right here, JTL, it's my friend James. So he designed the initial sketch of this card. Once again, props to you, man. And finally, there's a pesky gob. So that is the final part of, or at least that's the very final card in this entire set. So I hope you guys like this video. Please like, comment, and subscribe, whatever you'd like. But also to keep updated, just make sure to um, just check us out. This deck is now featured on the Game Crafter for 13 bucks, along with Cheeks, Challenging Orcs, and Banky's Bash and Farmers. So I hope you guys once again enjoyed this video, and I hope again to see you guys sometime soon. Keep on clashing.